Okay. Um, we're at about 70 people. So I guess I'll go ahead. Basically, the only announcement I have is, hey, if you're struggling, if you feel like uh, assignment work isn't going anywhere, if you feel like you need some help, but you don't know where to start, please reach out. Um, let's let's uh, get going with getting uh, caught up with assignment stuff. I know this unit in particular, there's a lot of ground to cover in a short amount of time. And so uh, you're definitely not alone if you feel like you're, there's, there's just too much all at once. Um, so yeah, please, our, it's our job to help out people who, uh, who require some, some help and the uh, curriculum certainly expects people to require some help from time to time. So yeah, I would definitely encourage people to either shoot me a DM or uh, I'm, I'm still in the process of checking in with a number of people. So if you haven't received a message from me, uh, to take a quick bathroom break. I uh, okay. <laughs> um, everybody check your mics. <laughs> it was Ben. He saw it. He looked up. Okay. Well, that'll be it for me. That's a good good uh, point to stop. <laughs> All right. Um. Thanks, Colin. Um. All right, uh, let me get the sharing back up here. And if you haven't joined the Kahoot quiz yet, the link is in the announcements channel, but you can um, you'll be able to see it here again in a second. Get this done properly. There you go. All right, give everybody a few seconds to uh, get in there at the last second if you haven't gotten in. Okay, I'm going to get started, um, but you can still join uh, if you want to. Let's do it. All right, class 11, we're going to review time leaf topics. True or false, time leaf templates are HTML files just with some special syntax. That is true. They are HTML files. They have the HTML extension on them, and it's just the addition of that namespace attribute on the HTML um, element that uh, allows the time leaf syntax to be added. All right, Brad's in the lead. Where in the file structure will Spring Boot look for templates? Yeah, um, literally a folder called templates in static, um, I'm sorry, uh, in the resources file, not static, it's next to static. Um, but yes, that is exactly where it looks. All right, Mina in the lead. Next question is a multi-select. Which of the following are valid time leaf attributes?
that's uh yes um interesting but this was why it was tricky so this is why i had the word attributes in bold th block is not uh an attribute it's an element it's a special element so but all of uh, the others that are valid are actually attributes that get added onto regular html elements so that's the main difference there okay Order the names of each type of time leaf expression according to the image. Yeah, okay, so the first one with the at symbol, um, and I can show that again, uh, yeah, is the link expression. The next one is the variable expression, and the last one is the fragment expression. Um, so that's just, you know, when you're using those different attributes, you use different syntax depending on what type of attribute it is and what it's for. Okay, good job. Trout in the lead. Which class provides a method to pass data from a controller to a template? Yeah, model. And if you remember from lecture uh, last time, and also Chris mentions this in his videos, it has nothing to do with the model in MVC. Um, it just has to do with that's what they named the class, but it has to do with um, making it possible for the controller to send data from the um, from the, the handler to the template. All right. Good job. All right, true or false? With the model class method uh, dot add attribute, uh, the first parameter must be a string. Yeah, that's true. Um, even though it's used as a variable in the template itself, when you use uh, add attribute, you have to pass it as a string. Otherwise, things will not work the way you expect. All right. What is the correct syntax for iterating over a collection in a time leaf template? Okay, uh, yes, that's the first one. Um, the main difference there um, is that the only thing that is actually inside that variable expression is the list, because the list is what was passed down from the controller to the template. Um, but item itself in this example is just the local variable you're creating within the template, and it, it doesn't get passed in. You're basically saying, this is what I wanna call each of the items that are you know, in, the, in the list. Um, so yes, yeah, so you want to make sure that variable expression is only wrapping um, the list that's being passed in. Good. All right, what's the correct syntax for using the logical and operator as a conditional?
Yeah, good job. Um, yeah, in this case, uh, you want to make sure that and is outside those um, variable expressions and that each of the conditions that you are, you know, kind of tying together um, have their own variable expressions. All right, Brad's back in the lead. This is valid syntax. TH replace equals, yeah, I'm not going to say it. You can look at it. <laughs> Yep, that's true. Um, I'm sorry. Uh, okay. Um, yes, that's false. Um, and the reason is, yeah, I had to I had to look at it twice, and this is why it's tricky. In in the this particular syntax, it requires you to use a double colon and not a single colon. Um, so that's why it looks correct, but it's actually not. So just make sure that when you're um, you know saying I want to go to this file and I want to extract this particular fragment that you're using that double colon in between instead. Trick question. All right, two more questions. Oh no, this is the last question, multi-select. Where in the file structure will Spring Boot look for resources such as images, CSS files, JavaScript files, et cetera? Yeah, good job. Um, yeah, uh, just like there is a templates folder in resources for templates, there is a static folder um, in resources. And then you can organize everything however you want with additional folders inside static, but that is where um, everything needs to live. And then your link expressions will be able to reference it from there. All right. Final rankings. Brad, third place. Great job, Brad in second place and he rolls in first place all right shrug and trout are the runners up all right great job everybody I just realized I need to pull this down a little bit all right okay um great job so we're talking about uh models tonight um getting into the the M uh, part of MVC. Um, so uh, regular format, um, announcements, lecture, studio, studio review. So um, just a reminder, graded assignment three is available. Um, it's due on the, the 9th of March, which is still a little ways off. But after this Thursday's class, when we talk about model validation, you'll have everything you need to know to finish it. Um, so you can, and, and you already could start it with the things you know um, as of tonight. So. Um, Reminder that there's an alumni panel on the 27th of this month, um, which is there's not it's it's a class, but it's not a regular class. Um, so you definitely want to come ask these uh, lunch code graduates all of your questions about um, what their experience has been. Um, that will kind of help you know what to expect uh, as you head towards liftoff, uh, aka unit three um, and apprenticeships and career. Um, and then I also wanted to point out I put this in the announcements channel. But I moved um, our current lecture example project out of the original repo for my other class examples from classes one through nine. And uh, I now have a repo called Java Lecture Examples Art Gallery. And we're gonna continue to use this for the rest of this unit for my for lecture examples. And if you look um, at this readme, you can see I've got some instructions here on how to set up a link to what's called upstream. So you know how uh, when you're on your local and you have your own forked version of the repository, your forked version is origin, right? But you can also set upstream, which means it'll go to the parent repository that you forked it from. That's my repository. 
Um, and that will enable you in the future, you can fetch it so that your local computer will know, hey, there's actually more branches available now. And that's gonna be important because I'm gonna to continue to add branches every class um, with starter code and solutions. So this is the instruction for kind of how to set that up and then be able to um, check out those branches on your local machine uh, if you had you know, already forked it and, and cloned it down to your machine in the past. All right. So um, let's talk about models and model binding. Uh, so we'll talk about uh, the model itself, kind of the concept of a model um, and how to create a model class, uh, using it in a controller, um, using it in the templates, and then um, this idea of having a data layer, um, because we're not working with databases yet, and then um, model binding, which is a great uh, syntax that simplifies things considerably for your forms. Okay, so the M and MVC. Uh, let's just remind ourselves about how this works. Um, we talked about it a couple of classes ago. Uh, model view controller is um, a common pattern known as a design pattern. Um, the model handles the logic and the manipulation of data. The view handles um, the page elements, the interaction with the user and the browser, that's, those are your templates. And the controller is the go-between. It's the, what routes, uh, you know, handles the routing of everything and all the requests um, and passes things back and forth between the view and the model. Uh, and then ultimately we will be, you know, adding a um, database and you will uh, be able to have persistent data where, you know, once you put it in there, it stays there unless you delete it. Um, instead of having to start over every time you rerun your application. Uh, but for tonight, we we are still we're going to talk about that data layer as a, a substitute for that uh, for now. Um, so the model itself is concerned with data, but it's not the data itself. Um, it, it basically just defines structure and logic, and makes sure that the data is in um, a form that is going to be really useful for your application, the way that you need need it to be presented. And so, if this controller is requesting data from the model. Um, the model is going to make sure that data, you know, is an object with properties and has everything organized according to its structure. And if you are actually receiving data from a user through the controller, that model structure will make sure that it can be stored properly. Um, so yeah, this is a class. Um, essentially, it's, it's classes are, are kind of how we how we do this. And there's this term POJOs, <laughs> uh, plain old Java objects. And the idea here is that. Um, Java classes, like you're going to be writing Java classes that could be used anywhere. We're going to use them in the context of this application, but they stand alone. So nothing about them uh, for now is going to be uh, super special other than the fact that we do have some things that we want to make sure to include in order for Spring Boot to use it um, the way we need it to. But, uh, but they are just Java classes. And so you have written these before. It, it's not gonna require um, a lot of new knowledge um, on that side of things. But um, this is pretty much what you need. So the fire, file structure is, you know, um, you wanna have um, a models folder that's right alongside that controllers folder that's in your, uh, your project uh, package. And um, these are the fields and methods you wanna have. So that, that makes it work as a model. You want to have an ID. Um, every object needs to kind of be able to be identified uniquely. Um, and then we'll use that same kind of thing we've used before where you have a static value next ID that will uh, always increment up every time you create a new object so that every single one has a unique number. Um, you want to have a field for each property that you need to, you know, for the class, um, however many different pieces of information you want to be a part of that object. And then a constructor for creating the object um, and then making sure you increment, increment next ID and if there's anything else you needed to do, um, run right up front as soon as um, you're instantiating the object, you would put that in the constructor as well. Uh, getters and then setters for most things, but not everything. Um, like you're not never gonna you know, wanna set the ID after you set it in the constructor. So um, you wouldn't have one for that, for example. Um, custom two string method equals method and hash code method. And we'll kind of go through examples for each of those. Um, and essentially, uh, those are kind of the, you know, that's pretty much all you need to have a class work as a model. Um, these are all things that you know how to do. The hash code thing, you know, I've been not, haven't really talked about before, but essentially, um, 
it, it's actually when you go and you use the IntelliJ generator, it actually provides both, you know, the equals and hash code together. Because it just essentially means that um, Java is going to uh, create a unique integer that represents that object, not just on the basis of its ID that you've set, um, but unique across all objects. So uh, you you can have, um, say, you have a a class you know, um, user, and you also have a class like item, um, those both can have IDs, like you might have an object of user that has an ID of one and an object of item that has an ID of one, but they'll have unique um, hash codes. So um, that's the idea there. Okay, so in order to use a model in a controller, um, you have to kind of um, upgrade uh, the way your, your data is presented. Um, so you're going to make use of the model class uh, in the controller and organize all of the different um, variables that you had in your template into uh, properties of an object. And then um, you'll use the values to, uh, to instantiate an object of that class. And that's, you know, that's that part of receiving the data back and then having it all organized in that, in that format. And then uh, you can add it to a collection, and, and, and then the collection will actually need to be a collection of, you know, class, ob you know, based objects and not just a string, which is what we were doing before. Um, so in this example here, I've got, you know, uh, maybe you're processing a sign up, you know, uh, form, and you're bringing in a first name, a last name, and an email, for example. Um, I mean, you probably would also have, you know, password and all of that, but let's just go with this for now. It fits on the slide. <laughs> Um, so there's your query parameters, right, coming in from your form. And um, then you would instantiate this user object if you've got a user that has these fields. Um, and then you would add it to, you know, the collection, and maybe you've um, just called that users. Uh, and then, you know, you would redirect back to whatever page you want them to go after they've submitted the form. Um, so it's just going to be a slight change to the way we were doing things before. Um, so we will update that. And then, of course, the third piece is the templates. Um, so you would, you know, have that get handler that's handler that's going to display the page, um, pass an object of the class to the template. Um, so like, let, let's say that, um, yeah, in this case, like, you know, we have a user profile, we're just looking at one user's information at a time. So it's just a single object. It's not a list in this case. Um, you can just use that dot notation and you're like, you know, wait, aren't the fields private? How can I use dot notation? Spring is cool in that it actually will do the work for you of using the getter that um, that you set in the in the model. So that's why good, it's important to set getters because you can uh, just use dot notation very simply in the template, and um, Spring will say, "Oh yeah, so let me just go use that getter, and then I can just you know grab that value." Um, so that's that keeps it very straightforward. Um, to be able to access all the different properties and display them however you want on the page in your template. Uh, let me see here. Yeah, let's go through. Um, right. Yeah, just pointing out that that's where, you know, so, that, so you're passing in the user, but then you have all the access to all these different properties. Okay, so let's go and um, update our art gallery project a bit to uh, make all of these changes. Um, we're going to create a model. Um, and then we're going to update the controller and update the template to use that model. Use data that's structured in that model might be a better way to say that. Okay, so we have, um, let me absolutely double check that I'm in the right branch here. Yep, okay. Uh, we've got uh, controller um, here and, uh, you know, our index page from the collection page that you remember we were just kind of, um, you know, displaying each of the uh, names of the artwork. And, and we just were using artwork to represent that string, right? So we just had a list of strings. Um, in fact, I can go ahead and run it and we can pull it up and, and let's, let's just remind ourselves of what this looked like. So localhost 8080. Yeah, so we have this little art gallery website. Um, we can go to the collection page, we can add something, but it's just a string. And I might say, you know, Mona Lisa. And, um, you know, maybe I add another one that's, you know, the Starry Night. Always a fan favorite. Um, and we have this nice little list here. So that's what we're looking at. Um, that's what we've done so far. Uh, so, uh, and we had our form, you know, that actually had that field 
that allows us to, um, you know, ask for that information and submit it, and it posts it, and then, you know, that calls the post, um, you know, uh, handler for the ad endpoint. So that's all great, um, but we want to actually have more data. We don't just want to have a title. We want to have multiple pieces of information that are associated with an artwork. So let's go over to uh, the art gallery uh, package here. And this is where I'm going to add this new package called models. So now we've got a models um, package uh, underneath uh, here next to controllers. And this is where we're going to put the classes that are being defined as models. So I'm going to have an artwork class. And in this class, um, I'm going to define all of the things that I need uh, for it to work as a model. So um, you might remember uh, we said we're going to have that static, that special static uh, field that will allow us to increment the ID of every new object that's created and um, make sure they're all unique. So I'm going to kind of throw that up there first. But then we have, you know, um, an ID. Let's say we have a title an artist. And let's say um, we also have a period. I'm going to make this a string um, because with art, you know, it's not, it's not, I mean, you can have a, a single year if you know what single year it was made in, but maybe you don't know. And maybe um, it's like a range or something. So it's just easier to make it string um, than anything else. Uh, okay. And um, then we need a constructor, and this is where using these generators can be really handy. And I can say, okay, I just want these three to be the properties that are passed in for the constructors. I'm going to choose those three, um, but I do want to set the ID. So I need to say this dot ID equals next ID, and then I also need to make sure that when this um, method runs, that I have uh, the incrementing of that for the next time. So I'll throw that in there so that gets run as well. And then I can do um, a, a getter for the ID. And then I'll do getters and setters for everything else. Um, well, these three anyway. There's no reason that we'd really ever want to access next ID um, probably outside of here. So I, I'm not going to create a getter or a setter for that. Um, but ben, you have a question? Uh, why did you start next ID with one and not zero? Um, because typically, uh, like, uh, it's going to have some, uh, some value that's probably not zero. If I'm trying to remember, I'm pretty sure that when we get to databases and the database is actually handling assigning the IDs that it's going to start with one. Um, it's not quite the same thing as like zero indexing, like you would for an array or something. Um, so, uh, and, the, and this could be some other number. Maybe I always want to start it at, you know, a thousand or something, right? But um, one will work for now. Okay. And so the last thing here is to have a two string override. And in this case, um, I'm going to, I'm going to actually uh, overwrite this, but we can just do this for now. Um, what I really would like to do is to just have some sort of short, um, you know, Specifically, specifically concatenated thing that we might find a use for later. Oops, got the return key, keyword in there twice. So I'm just gonna, you know, say title and then in parentheses say artist comma period. Um, and that'll be something that maybe we wanna use that particular presentation of the data at some point and we can just um, make use of that. And then um, the last, very last thing is equals and hash code. And I only really want, um, it to be on the basis of ID. So I'm going to uncheck these other three. And then of course the uh, hash code method will do the same. So it creates those where, you know, it, it checks to make sure that it's not already the same object or it's not null um, or it's not of the right class before it casts it to the class and then checks is the ID equal to, you know, um, this. And uh, if you need a refresher on that, go back to the class where we were learning about um, this, you know, uh, overriding these because it kind of goes step through step why all these are necessary. Um, okay, and then th and then there's that hash um, that it'll actually take it and hash that ID into a special integer. 
uh, for its own purposes behind the scenes. Okay, so we've got a model, look at that. And it's and like I said, it's just a regular Java class, right? Um, we just have to make sure it has all the things that um, you know the Spring Boot needs. So we're good there. Uh, so the next step is to um, go over to the uh, controller and actually uh, use it. Um, so uh, for one thing, we're using this art collection that was a list of strings. So we're going to change this now to be um, a list of artwork objects. And then um, for our add form, um, where we actually have the, uh, let's see, yeah, uh, the, the post mapping um, for when we're receiving the data in, now instead of receiving a string, we're gonna be receiving um, three strings. That's going to be um, the, you know, the three things that we need from it. And so we're gonna have a string title, string um, artist, I think I said, and string uh, period for the time period. Um, and here we might say, um, artwork.get title, which is gonna make more sense um, once we, oh, that's not, yeah, that's not gonna work, just title. I'm thinking ahead guys, okay. Uh, we're gonna, kind of like we did last time, I'm going to like code this for you and then I'm gonna change some stuff again when we talk about other topics, so. Uh, we'll get there. Okay, so here, this is where we're no longer just working with a single string we've passed in. Um, and now our art collection is a list of artwork uh, class objects, right? So we're going to actually say, I want um, new artwork um, object, and I want to pass in title artist and period to the constructor, and then it can create that object and place it in that list. Um, so then the third part, of course, is to come over to our uh, form and update this so that we have uh, multiple fields. So I'm going to copy those a couple times. We'll say artist and change the name. Oh, yeah, let's change the names of all of these. We want this to be title, this to be artist, and this to be the period. Um, and as those, of course, um, have to match those query parameters. Um, so that it knows which uh, which input is being applied to which of those um, when it comes to the controller, because those are going to come in as query parameters from the form, and they need to match. Um, so as long as they match, it'll pass those into this constructor, create a new object of that class, and add it to this list. Um, and then when we display it on the page, um, so this is the collection page here, instead of just displaying a single string now, we need to display um, you know, multiple properties about it. So I think uh, what I want to do for this is, um, let me double check where I landed on this. I have too many files. Okay. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm going to copy this in so that it actually um, is, uh, it makes more sense. Um, so we can still use collection. We're still using that to pass in, um, you know, that list, right? And we can still use artwork as the, the local variable that represents a single piece of artwork. It's just that now it represents an object, not just a string. So where it matters is where we're actually displaying the text, right? Um, so in this case, I'm gonna actually uh, change this to be an expression that concatenates together um, several different pieces of information. Um, <laughs> Let me add the A there. Artwork.title plus, and this is um, known as an HTML entity, and it's just uh, an M dash, which is a long dash. So it'll, it'll look nice on a page. Um, and I'll add the artist and the period. And that's you know a little bit different presentation than what we put in the two string method. Um, so we're gonna customize it here. And just so you guys kind of know where we're headed down the road, uh, when we get to where we're working with the databases and stuff, we're going to be able to like really do this upright and like make it really pretty the way it's presented maybe even have images in there um things like that so uh but for now you know we're keeping it simple i want to focus on the the main concepts of the model for now so we'll just display it as a little concatenated string and that'll that'll work um so i think uh this is going to all uh work together now um let's give it a run see how we go I'm going to just go back to the beginning. All right, so we're here. We're going to go to the collection. 
uh, we're invited to add a work of art. And now we have a form that has all three. So I can say, you know, Mona Lisa by Leonardo da Vinci, uh, 1503 to 1506 approximately is what they estimate. And there we have it. And then it's you know, nicely um, put together. So now we can add another one. Pearl of the Pearl Earring. Um, that is Johannes Vermeer. And that was in 1665, I believe. Yep. So we have this nice little, you know, thing displaying and it's all coming, um, you know, through, it's all made possible because we have this model that puts all the different information together into a single object. Okay. So how are we doing? Um, is everybody uh, on board with this? You got any questions so far before we go to the next thing, Mina? Uh, uh, Kerry, can you give a quick recap of uh, what you did in the code, uh, like a summary? Sure. Okay. So the first thing we did was create a model in this models folder. That's just a Java class that defines uh, what this object will look like, what properties it will have. Um, it assigns it an ID behind the strings. Um, and then we have the getters and setters, the custom two string, all of that stuff, right? Um, and then we're going to, you know, over here, we have taken our controller and made it where now instead of a list of strings, we have a list of artwork objects based on that class. And we are, um, you know, passing that down, that same list down to the index page. And then we also have a, our form updated to where we can accept three different pieces of information now that are uh, properties of that, of that object um, that correspond to the fields of the class. And then uh, on the form, we created those extra fields, gave them uh, all the proper names. And on the index page, we used all three properties uh, of those objects to display all the information together in this list on the, like, this page. Okay, Brad? Thank yeah, you. I, I know uh, you didn't go this route, but would you have been able to call that two string method in your template if you wanted to? Um, well, yeah, you, I mean, we, I can, sh I can actually show you exactly how that works. Oops. Let me, uh, oh yeah. Okay. I'll have to highlight it again. We could literally just say artwork because you remember with Java, if you, um, just print, you know, or, or say, I want to see the object, it's going to go call that two string method. So I can say artwork and it's going to give us the format that we put in the two string method. So gotcha. let's run this and you'll see it. I'm gonna to have to uh, put the objects in again, but I'll you know make it fast. Would that work with other methods on that class? Mm -hmm. Oh, awesome. uh, yeah. Um, that's a that's a good a good question. Um, yeah. Um, we, as we get into uh, more complex stuff, we probably will have like instances where we might have like some instance methods and things, and we can kind mm -hmm. of play around with that. We'll see. Um, okay, so Mona Lisa, Da Vinci, uh, 15, something, something. Okay, so um, now you can see that we have a totally different format. We don't have that dash in there. We've got parentheses instead, because this is what was defined in the two string method. Gotcha, yeah. cool, thanks. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so I'm gonna undo that. Um, but what I will do for you is uh, kind of show that as, uh, that is not what I meant to do. Yeah, that you also could do it that way. In fact, th this is how we're gonna do it when we do the delete form later. Um, that, that was my, that's my plan. Mitchell, you got a question? Yeah, just a real quick one. Um, when you're making the model uh, models folder and controllers folder, is can that be a directory? Or does that have to be a package? Um, when you, uh, are working with these uh, little menus here, you'll notice that when you're in um, this package up here for your, uh, your actual um, Java stuff, it doesn't give you a directory option, it gives you a package option. Meanwhile, when you're down here in resources and you wanna add something, then it gives you a directory option, but not a package option. So it really just has, it's a matter of where it is in the project. Gotcha, thanks. Yeah. Okay, um, Ben, you have another question or? Uh... Just real quick. Uh, so as you're adding stuff in from the form on the web, mm -hmm. how does it automatically 
alphabetize it so it's not kind of a hodgepodge and easier to read? I um, do not have that functionality in here because um, if you want to, uh, we're I actually, um, I didn't bring it up, but I actually meant to. Uh, so thanks for asking. With objects in Java, you have to use a, what's called a comparator um, and you have to have some extra functionalities in order, or, or for it to sort by a property um, because now you're, you know, um, it, with a string, it's a string. It's, it's just a matter of doing it alphabetically, right? Um, but you have to, for objects, you have to have some extra stuff. It's more outside the scope of what we can get through today, but I will show, we will get into it eventually. Um, so I would definitely, will, so I just took that functionality out. So for right now, they're not sorted. Yeah. Okay. So let's move forward. Uh, we've got a couple more topics to talk about here. Um, and so, <laughs> Oh, crud, we need a day later. Um, it's, a, it's a joke because crud is this name um, that is something we talk about with databases, with data, uh, that all, all databases um, are all, all uh, it's actually called a repository, but um, you have to have these this standard functionality is what I'm trying to say. You have to be able to create new data, read it, you know, go look it up and read it, you have to be able to update it if you want to edit it, and you also have to be able to delete it. Um, we are not working with a database yet, um, but we will. And when we do that, there's a special Spring Boot class called CRUD Repository that has a lot of those methods built into it. It's, it's actually awesome. There's tons of methods built in that you will appreciate when we get to this stuff. Um, so for now, we're going to do something different. We're going to create a Java class that's going to kind of be the place where we store it. Because really, we shouldn't be storing that list of artwork objects, for example, in the controller itself. We should have that removed from the controller. So we're going to create a Java class that um, and treat it as a data layer um, that has a map of key value pairs where the key is the object ID and the value is the object. It makes it a lot faster for looking things up. Um, than having to like iterate through a list and compare, you know, check all the IDs. Um, and then we will have some static methods that will, you know, uh, simulate kind of the same way CRUD repository works. We'll have add, get by ID, get all. Uh, you could have update, we're not gonna do that tonight. Um, and then delete. Uh, so we're going to uh, code some of these, but not all of these. Um, and, you know, keep in mind that this class is not a model. Um, it's not going to have a constructor and all that stuff. It's really just going to have a bunch of static uh, methods, and it's going to have a single static variable for that hash map, um, because it's really just about storing and managing things in lieu of, you know, us being able to work with a, a true database. So, um, right. So we will have this layer that kind of um, gives us a, a place to put this data. Um, instead of a database and store it and then have these methods available to us. And because uh, it doesn't belong in the class and it doesn't belong in the controller. Um, so this will um, actually, you know, allow us to have these methods and then we'll just have to modify our controller a little bit in order to use them. And then, um, you know, static methods are always called directly on the class, right? Because they're held at the class level. So we would never instantiate an object of this, you know, and, and I've got this kind of user, you know, thing as, a, as one of the examples I've got here, we're not coding that, but um, if you had a data layer called user data, you would call the class, you know, call these methods on the class. We're not gonna create an, ob an object that is an instance of user data. Everything about it is static. Okay, and then um, we will put that in a folder. Um, yeah, data. Um, so you can kind of see the, like in the example I've got from the art gallery thing, right next to controllers and models, we're going to create a folder right there, data to hold that. Um, and then the uh, the last thing that we have to do is uh, we're going to create a delete form. I'm actually going to wait to bring this up and we'll we'll bring it back in a second. Um, let's do the first part first and just get this going. So uh, over here um, in my art gallery package, I'm going to add one more package called data. And then inside there, I'm going to add another class. And this is what we will call, uh, actually, I'm going to call it collection data, because it really is about multiple artworks, not a single artwork. Um, and in here, we will, I'm going to make sure I've got my, my right uh, code here to refer to for this. Okay, yeah. Um, so like I said, 
we have the static uh, hash map, and then we'll have our methods. So the first thing is to do uh, private, static, and final, so it can't be overwritten. And we'll do a map of uh, that has integer key and an artwork um, value. And I also need this. There we go. Um, and we'll just call that art collection, just like we called our list that currently resides in the controller, but we're gonna start using it from here instead. And that's just gonna be initialized as a new hash map um, so that it uh, is ready for us to add things um, to it. And then we uh, come in here and we say, okay, I need these um, methods, right? I need to be able to add something to it. So we're gonna take um, a single artwork object and uh, feed it to this add thing. And we will just say artwork collection dot put. Remember that's how you add keys in uh, key value pairs um, to a, a map. And we'll say artwork dot get ID and then artwork itself, the entire object will be um, the second part there. Okay. Uh, and that's all we need to do. It just it just says, okay, go, go to this map now where we're storing this information, put the ID as the key and the entire object as the value. And then this will start to fill up with, you know, all of those um, keys and value pairs. Okay. Uh, then of course we also want, I um, actually don't know if we're gonna, we're gonna use this find by ID. This is, a, this is kind of a standard one to have. Um, I may not use it tonight, um, I can't remember, um, but uh, it essentially just, you just go and you say, I wanna get the value, I wanna get that object that is at that ID. Um, and it's complaining, I'm not sure why. Interesting. Are you just missing a return type? I am. Thank you. It needs to return uh, artwork. <laughs> Thank you. I was like, I'm looking at it and I just couldn't see it. Okay. Uh, and then here, um, we actually are going to return an entire collection of artwork. And um, you'll notice I'm not using list or uh, array list there. Um, I'm just using the generic collection. Um, Chris goes in some detail in his video about kind of why that's, you know, used that way. Uh, but if I didn't do it, if I actually did, you know, list instead, um, it's going to complain at me in a second. You'll see it. Um, we're going to call this get all. And we're just going to return um, the collection that we have up here but return just the value so we have a list of the objects. Um, now, you see this is complaining. It's because it really wants it to just be a generic collection here. Um, and so that's why if you type, you know, if you actually type it this way as the return type, then it's happy. But it still um, has, uh, it's an iterable, it has access to um, all the things that you need to be able to iterate through a list. Um, all right, last one is we're gonna have a delete, um, which won't mean anything until we actually create the form. But um, I'm going to call it remove because that's the same as like the uh, actual hash, yeah, the map method. Um, I could call it delete, but I'll call it remove. Um, and that's essentially gonna allow us to just provide the ID and then use the built-in um, remove for the map class to, uh, to take the entire key value pair and take it out. Okay, so we'll get there. Um, let me pull this back out since we're not using it anymore. So we have our collection data class, this class of static uh, values and methods. So now we can come over into our controller and um, start to change things a little bit here. So we're gonna say, okay, we are no longer going to use this. We're gonna delete this out. And instead, we're going to refer to that data layer class to retrieve the collection because it's being stored there instead. So we'll call it um, on the class and say collection data dot get all. 
And now we uh, have that list pulled in and we're, we can pass that here uh, down to the page, to the template. Um, similarly, uh, here where we want to be able to um, add uh, to that uh, map, uh, now we're going to uh, change this to be the collection data class. And we, call, we called our method add. So, you know, add still works there. And, and the idea is to pass in an artwork object. So, um, and then it'll, it'll get the ID to set the key and all of that. So that part um, all works as well now. Uh, so I think um, that's it for everything except for him, like actually having the delete stuff, which we'll do in a second. But let's go ahead and just make sure this is still working the way we expect it to. Now that we're storing the, storing all of the artwork objects in a different place. All right. Okay. So I should be able to go in here and add it. Mona Lisa, Da Vinci, let's just go 1503. Yeah, and it's it grabbed it, it stored it, and now it's being stored over in that collection data class instead. And then we're accessing it um, you know, to display it on the page here with that get all method. Okay, so that's um, basically the idea of having a, a data layer. It is a temporary measure. Um, once we start working with um, databases, uh, we will start using that cred repository class and do, doing things just a little bit differently. Uh, but this is, a, this is you know, good because it gets um, that storage out of the repository. I mean, I'm sorry, out of the um, controller. We don't want it in the controller. Okay, uh, so then this last piece is what, you know, we wanted to be able to delete things, right? So how do we do that? Um, we have, we're gonna add another form and we're going to uh, put it at slash delete instead of slash add like the first form. And we wanna have get and post handlers just like we do for add. Um, the get handler should pass the list of objects to the template so it can display all of the things that you are going to take into consideration for deletion. And then um, you'll want to kind of do a series of checkboxes. This is one way to do it. Um, so we'll do it this way. And uh, one for each object, each checkbox needs to have the same name, but then you can use this timely attribute th value, which isn't one we've talked about yet, but um, this allows you to uh, dynamically give as you're looping over the entire list, um, each object's ID as the value for that checkbox. And then the post handler um, that you know all the information gets sent to will accept a list of IDs to just match um, you know any of the ones that were checked. Um, and then the last thing uh, is that you we actually have to pass in this required equals false to the request param um, annotation because if you were to try, if the user was to try to submit the form without actually having anything checked, you'd get an error. Um, so this basically says it's not required. So, you know, go ahead and uh, redirect anyway at the end of that um, handler, even if nothing was checked. All right, so that those are the that's the nuts and bolts. I know that was just a lot of text and it doesn't mean anything until we actually do it. So let's go do it. All right, uh, so first things first, we're gonna come down to our templates and um, inside the collection uh, kind of subdirectory here, I'm gonna add another time leaf template and I'm gonna call it um, delete. Okay. And uh, if we go over into the add art form, we've got, you know, this kind of uh, like, I can just kind of, well, let's start with what we've got here. Cause we've got some uh, fragments pulled in and all of that. So let me um, come back over in here and I'll just replace these and then we will, um, say, you know, like, you know, remove artwork from collection. And then we're going to have some uh, different stuff here, uh, but we can still have a button and this uh, is, you know, delete instead of add. Uh, so what we want to do here is have, um, you know what, I, I did not name this, what I meant to name this differently. Give me just a second here. I'm going to refactor this, rename. Yeah, I intended to be consistent with the way that I did the other one and call it delete add, I'm sorry, <laughs> delete art form. Yeah, because we the, the template itself I'm naming with, you know, a little bit more information. 
So we'll refactor that. And now it's, yeah, delete. We have add art form and delete art form. But the actual route where it lives um, in terms of the URL, we'll just say delete. Um, OK. So in here, um, as part of our form, we want to uh, basically have, um, we're almost at 6.30, okay, I'm going to make this quick. Uh, for We're gonna have a, a TH block actually, um, use that special element to do the loop. And we are going to say, okay, um, when we create our, our controller handlers, um, they will be passing, um, the get handler will pass this list uh, in. So we'll be able to kind of say, I wanna look at each um, piece of art that's in the collection. So we'll use this th, uh, th each um, syntax here to do that. And then inside um, the loop, for each one, we're gonna have a label. And then I'm going to have an input um, that is of type checkbox. And remember I said that they all have to have the same name. And we want to give it a name that represents all of the IDs that are going to be in the list um, that comes back uh, for anything that's checked. And then here's the TH value I talked about, um, where we actually dynamically um, grab the uh, artworks ID. So I can just say ID. Remember, I can just use um, dot notation, and Spring Boot will actually use the getter, get ID, um, when, when this is done, like this. OK, and then self-closing tag. And then I also am going to have um, the text that I want to display next to this. And so I'm just gonna use a span here for this and say um, it, <laughs> it kicked me out of my quotes. There we go. Um, all right, I'm gonna use this uh, variable expression and just say artwork. So this is where we're gonna do what you guys asked about earlier. Um, we're gonna use that two string method to just display the generic kind of, you know, um, uh, uh, format that we provided in ToString. Um, and that, you know, just implicitly calls ToString to just do the artwork like that um, and, and ask it to display the entire object. All right, so that loops over. Every single one of these will be a group of, of uh, checkbox, uh, checkbox with a label in the, in the checkbox itself. And then um, we'll have the delete button at the bottom. And I think that's it. So um, that's good for the form. But nothing is going to display unless we actually tell it to. So let's come over here to the controller. And down here at the bottom, um, I'm going to have, uh, there was supposed to be some to-dos down here and they got uh, missed, so that's okay. Um, we're going to add this uh, first one and we'll do get mapping and make it for slash delete and then have public string and display uh, delete art form. I'm gonna be really specific there. Um, and, and then we do need to have um, that model class in order to pass the attribute to get the uh, list, uh, list to the page. Um, so uh, we can just say um, model.addAttribute and um, we're gonna call it uh, collection, uh, just like we did before. Um, but then, so that, that's the variable that we'll you know, pull into the page, but the value we're going to give it, um, just like we did before, is just going to be that collection data dot get all so that it gets just the values of the, of that map and puts them in a collection and um, passes it down. And I realize that it, it's, uh, it might be confusing sometimes I'm using the word collection two different ways. Cause we're talking about, you know, Java collections as lists. And then I'm also, I have an art collection. Um, so I'm trying to be clear about that um, as much as possible, but yeah. And then we uh, return um, slash um, delete, right. Um, oh, no, 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 I, I'm, I'm, I'm tripping. <laughs> I want, <laughs> I'm like sitting here going, that is not right. Um, delete uh, art form. Yeah, so we return the template name so that it actually will um, go and find the right template to display at this route. Yes, okay. Uh, all right, so that will work for um, displaying the page. So uh, let's go ahead and just test it. Um, we'll get that far. 
And then of course we won't be able to submit the form. It'll have an error because we don't have the post mapping yet, but we'll get there in a second. All right, so let's uh, come here. And, oh, uh, I haven't added the link yet. We'll come back and add a link. Um, but for now, let's say delete. Okay, uh, there's no nothing in the collection to delete because I haven't added anything. That's helpful. Okay, <laughs> uh-oh. <laughs> there we go. All right, let's add something. So sorry, night, Van Gogh. Uh, I think it was 1889. Um, all right, so we have we have that now. So now if I go over to slash delete, um, there it is. Uh, so I you know can check it and check it. And of course, right now if I check it and I, I do delete, we get an error because I don't have that um, handler in there yet. So let's go do that. Let's stop this. And before I forget, let's go to the uh, index page for the collection route and add. Um, yeah, we're gonna basically just do this. But we're going to make it conditional. We're going to um, kind of do um, what's done up here with checking to make sure a collection exists and that it has a size. But in this case, it's not, we're not going to use th unless we're going to use um, th if. So I'm going to change this part. But it's the same logic. You know, it basically just says, you know, make sure the collection exists and, and it has something in it. Um, and if so, then display, you know, this. And so now I'm going to make this um, link to the delete page and say uh, delete from the collection, or maybe we say remove because that sounds nicer, um, okay, for front facing. Um, and then we'll go and we'll create the post handler for this. So we'll do post mapping for the same route. Um, and I just realized that on my form, I believe I have still have this as add, yeah. You can actually technically leave this off whenever it's the same one, but just for the sake of being explicit, I left it on there, but I do wanna make sure that it, it posts to delete and not to add um, because I, I you know, copied and pasted that from the add form. Okay, I just realized that. Uh, yes, so here we are. So we are going to do public string um, process delete art form. And this is where we use request param and where we give it um, that uh, required equals false to make sure that it won't break break it if it's um, if there's nothing checked. And then uh, the parameter uh, it, itself is going to just be that um, remember that it was a an array of ints, right? Because we have IDs, it's going to be a list of IDs. So um, we'll have ints and and uh, what did I call them? Artwork IDs, I believe. Okay, so that should work. And then basically um, what we want to do there is come back and uh, loop over the artwork IDs and remove them one at a time. So we can just use a simple uh, for each loop for this um, with Java. Artwork IDs. And then just call uh, from collection data, because remember, again, we're going to call it a static method on the class and call that um, remove and then just give it uh, the ID that is part, you know, from this loop, this local variable here. And then um, at the end, we just return um, redirect collection. And that should take care of that to go back to the collection page. Okay. So let me start this back up and let's make sure this all works so we were expecting it to. And I know we're a little over time. Um, the next part will be pretty short. Okay. Um, so we see that the delete uh, stuff is not here, which means that that logic was working that TH if we did. So we'll add some work. Um, Mona, Da Vinci, um, 1503, sure. Um, and now we have it. Now it says remove a work of art and I can come over and I can check it and uh, delete. And now we're back to having an empty collection. And we can test it again you know, with multiple ones. Um, uh, so we'll add, oh, <laughs> I hit something. All right, there we go. Um, oh, it added it twice, that's funny. It, oh, it just opened it in a new window. That's hilarious, okay. Um, but, uh, 
sure, okay. And I can go and I can add one of them and then the other one's still there and that's not very helpful because they were the same, but um, you get the idea, right? Um, so you can have multiple ones and um, right. All right, let's move on. Because we do have one more thing to talk about, uh, but this is fast. So the last thing here is that there is actually a better way to receive data, um, especially you can imagine having a, like maybe you have an object that has a lot of properties. Um, you have a, a class that has a lot of fields. You, it would get really old really fast to have to have a billion parameters here representing every single one of those fields. So um, there's actually this um, attribute, uh, I'm sorry, annotation you can use called model attribute that um, you can receive an object of the class, Spring Boot immediately uh, instantiates that object for you. And then all you have to do is just pass it, uh, pass it through and use it um, the, however you need to. In this case, um, you know, in this example, um, you would be, you know, adding it to your list. Um, if this is like, you know, processing that something to be added, and you know, once the the model attribute um, annotation has been used, and you declare that it's it's of this type, you know, this class type, um, and here's the name, you can just straight add it. Boom. Um, and oh, the, yeah. And this last bullet point here: just make sure your names uh, match. Um, just as always, um, because uh, you're not actually explicitly listing them here. So they absolutely have to match whatever's in the template has to match what's in the model um, because you're not listing those properties individually here. Um, so there's the annotation, there's the model class, um, and there's the object. And you can see that, um, you know, there's a static method of the data layer class being called to add it to that map. And you're just passing that object directly, uh, just like that, boom. Uh, so another beautiful thing about using models to represent all this data and tie together what's in the view um, to uh, you know, what's being stored um, for the data. Uh, so, um, give me a second. Yeah, that's okay. So let's come over and do that real fast. So we can come back up here to our add um, post mapping here and actually change this. So we no longer are gonna have title artist and, and period be separate parameters. We're gonna say, I want to use model attribute and I wanna make sure it's just an artwork class um, artwork. And um, so then here I could change this to be like artwork uh, dot, you know, get title or something um, to represent my little log that I'm doing. Um, and then here, uh, instead of having to uh, instantiate this here, it's already done. Just by doing this, um, it's been instantiated, which is why I was able to call this um, on this line because it's already been done. So I don't actually have to do this. I just have to name it artwork um, and refer to this uh, and, and then it gets added. So I'll stop it and restart it. And we'll make sure it's still working, um, but that's it. That's all there's to it. Okay, so we add something, sorry night, there we go, 1989. Yeah, and it has been stored. Um, all three of those, uh, of those properties uh, were lumped you know, together, it was instantiated, and then we added it to the list and it displayed on the page um, using uh, you know, this, this handler right here. So uh, so that's it. Um, does anybody have any quick questions about that before we get you off to studio? Um, <clears throat> I know it's a lot. Um, I'm going to make a preliminary version of these slides available to you. Um, I'll just post it in the lecture questions channel um, in a minute. And then you guys will have it, this all to refer to while you're doing your studio. But let's uh, talk about the studio real fast. Um, so spa day, you are going back to your spa day thing, but you're going to switch to a different uh, branch. They have a, a starter code branch called user signup starter in that repo for you. Um, you'll create a user controller, um, a user class, and uh, some new templates in the user directory. And uh, get, basically you'll just be registering the user and then taking them to that form that allows you to kind of tell them a little bit about what the services that you want, which is what you had created last time. Uh, all the instructions, of course, are here. Um, one thing I did want to point out, 
Uh, where is it? There was something I wanted to point out and I'm having trouble finding it now. Oh yeah. Um, we are gonna talk about validation in the next class on Thursday um, in terms of using um, Spring for validation. But uh, there is actually built-in validation on input fields if you set their types correctly. So like for a password, if you set type equals password, it prevents it from being visible. You have all those little dots instead. Um, if you set type equals email, it won't let you put something in that doesn't have an at symbol and have a domain. Um, and that's just something that's built into the browsers. So um, you can you know, test that out and it should work for you. But this is all pretty much gonna be um, exactly what I just talked about, um, but should be pretty straightforward. Um, it will instruct you to uh, also have like a second field for the password to like have them verify their password. Um, so you might think about, you know, what the impacts of that would be, um, but we will come back uh, and, um, you know, I'll code this out for you uh, later. So uh, basically um, Thursday, we're talking about model validation and enumerations. Um, and then the next class after that is that special panel for you guys. There will be no lecture that night. And then after that, next Thursday, um, we're gonna get into SQL. And if you go into Canvas, you have links in there to a completely different textbook, essentially. It's because it, it's used for um, a different um, course that is taught in the Women Plus program. Um, and uh, there's two chapters in there and you'll do one on class 14 and one in class 15. And then when we come back class 16, we're going to put it all back into your spring project and, and show you how to connect it all up. Um, but there is a catch up class on Monday the 6th because your graded assignment is due on the 9th. So yeah, lots of lots of kind of uh, scheduling exceptions coming up, um, but that should be it. Uh, you guys head off to um, your studio, and uh, why don't you come back at eight ten? Eight ten. Let's do that. <laughs>